Welcome back guys to another episode of Wrench and Redneck. We're bringing you a 1987 Dodge Charger Shelby Edition. It's another beautiful, rainy, windy, cold, miserable day here in Iowa, and I've been sick for the last three days, so it makes it all much better, but I couldn't pass this deal up. Check this out. Let's look at this thing. Turbo model looks just like my 84 Daytona. It may have ran uh, at some point, and story is, keys are missing, so we had to put a jack under it to get it up on the car. Oh, nice handprint there. Check this out. Shelby edition. Turbo, manual drivetrain. I mean, it's it's kind of rough, but it's a Dodge Charger. Let's check out the inside of this thing. But she's a little rough in here. The guy said the car, he was selling them as parts, and I ended up getting a title from him uh, for the two cars as well. So that's awesome. That's going to make it a lot easier for me. Had no keys, so the steering wheel's been locked. It does shift in all the gears, which is nice because my Daytona is locked up. I can't shift that, but everything seems pretty good. Other than, other than that, but that's just a suggestion. Glove box is torn apart. Nice aftermarket boost gauge there. This thing, it's got potential. I, I could see us ripping around in this. All right, put a battery in it. No idea if it's good. Let's see if she starts. All right, we got we got power. Nothing. Oh, what's that gauge? Oh my god, it's running. It ran, no way. We finally got this turd back into the shop. Um, it is missing like no other. I'm sure the fuel's 100 years old. The tires are half flat. The interior smells just awful. And Ah, this guy's some other problems, but we're gonna get this thing back on the road Clean up the interior a little bit Got some new parts for the motor Sunroof is leaking gonna see if we can't repair that quick Pretty sure the bolts rusted out on the seats Tires are all four tires are different <laughs> It's got a number of problems, but let's tear into it. I'm telling you the camera makes this car look so much better than it actually is you can tell this thing is just sun faded like no other. But let's go ahead, this hood pops here. Get some light in here, maybe that goes right there, I don't know. All right, what do we got? Another 2.2 liter turbo four banger. This car is clearly not running right. Um, one good thing is this drivetrain is identical to the Omni and my Daytona. So that means I could swap parts, see if this works. Maybe that doesn't, you know, who knows. Um, the brake pedal is non-functional, meaning you go to press it, it doesn't even move. It's completely stuck. So I think we're gonna go ahead, soak the bolts on everything for the brakes because we're probably gonna be repairing them. Um, check the spark plugs, Spark plug wires, check the oil, make sure it's got oil in it. Check the air box, make sure there's no rat's nest in it. Um, like I said, it's turboed, check some boost lines, maybe there's some vacuum lines that are cracked and bad. We're gonna look all over it. Um, get this thing running like a top, put it back on the road, um, and then go from there. It's like a little mouse got to the coil wire, that could be an issue here. 
Battery cables barely on. Probably should check the intake. There might be a nest in that. Boy, we have just all kinds of vacuum lines on this thing. Like, we got some that aren't even connected. Boost leaks. Get that fixed. Looks like we got a map sensor back here. It's kind of broken. We just, we got wires all over this thing that don't look like they should be here. All right, let's see what we got going on here. An absolute mess. Not working. Oh, huh. strut towers aren't too rusty. Master cylinder, replace. All that wiring, throw it out, we don't need it. <laughs> nah, but in all seriousness, the spark plug wires, they actually look like they've been replaced before. Um, not chewed up or anything like that. Got our coil wire here. There is some damage to the coil wire. Right at the very end, you can kind of see it looks like some mice are chewing on it, you know, having a nice snack there. Uh, this thing just has an absolute crazy amount of vacuum lines, which is actually kind of weird because the Daytona is the same motor and it's turboed. It doesn't have any of these vacuum lines, but it is three years older. Um, so we're gonna look those over, figure out what they're doing. I noticed a couple of them are actually missing caps or don't have anything going to them, but there's lines going in there. Is that just open? This one's broken off. Um, looks like we have a line here that's going into something and going into nothing. And then it goes in there. And well, that one's broke. So we got aftermarket wires all over this thing. I think we had some wires up here. But, what? It, or, let's see if they're hot. Nope. So, I, what is happening? We're gonna pop off the air box here. Check that, make sure we ain't got any mouse in there. Let's go ahead, let's fire this thing up and let's, let's listen to it for a second. This thing runs like crap. <laughs> We're gonna start with the coil wire. It goes from our distributor cap there to there. Let's get that replaced and let's see if that does anything. Went to O'Reilly's, picked up some new plug wires. Oh, is that even tight? Nope, nope. Yeah, might as well just check out the tightening belt while we're here. Wow, that's... That's much better than the Omni one. The Omni one was damn near falling off. Let's just put that back on right now. Not, uh, sometimes you can look in here, they'll have some corrosion or something going on. So, this insulation on our coil wire here, uh, insulation on our coil wire, it's not down to the metal per se, but, oh, this thing is just breaking apart like crazy. What that can do with not having the insulation is actually arc to any metal source if the metal is close to it, which the coil sitting here is mounted right on the fender. The wire comes right into it. It's within like an inch of metal. So usually a trick to that is if it's dark out, you can start the car up. You can actually see it arcing from the plug wire to any metal surrounding it. Let's throw this new one on. That's garbage. Go ahead, put her back on our coil here. Maybe, maybe not. 
There we go. Let's fire back up. Let's see if that did anything. I don't think it's going to do anything, but maybe. got a power loss. We're missing four cylinders. <laughs> um, RPM gauge isn't working. Fuel gauge says a quarter. Odometer, we got 89,000 miles on it. Um, it just looks like crap. The dash is falling apart. And uh, so yeah, we just, let's get some fresh fuel in it. Let's fix the boost line. And go from there. You can actually rev the little thing up now. Um, it has a hesitant. Right when you go to hit the gas, it cuts it and then it accelerates. Um, could be a couple of things. I'm gonna guess bad gas. Maybe the carb. Is this fuel injected? This fuel injected. Throttle body, whatever. Could be kind of bad. Um, gummed up, meaning. So we might need to pull that apart. We got some vacuum lines, they're broken apart, um, which could definitely lead to boost leak. I noticed the boost gauge is not working, and actually, you gotta check this out. Er, not even bolted down at all. This one? Oh, well, that. why is that one more solid than the driver's seat? Remember my Omni trick? Leave the seats unbolted, it feels like it has way more power than it actually does. <laughs> Oh, hey, this is the hose for uh, our air filter. We got the boost gauge right there. It, that is not working. Um, and as you saw, there was that clear boost line that came through and kind of broke apart in the firewall there. I'm gonna assume that that plastic tube was for the boost gauge, so we'll hook that back up, because that's a boost leak right there. AFR gauge, I believe is working, because the car actually says that it's running lean. Man, I can't even reach the pedal because the seat's broken. So I'll turn it on. It actually says power loss. <laughs> um, so she's running lean, I'll give her some gas. I'll hold the gas. If I hold it into the RPMs, it starts getting back to where it was. Um, better just go ahead and don't. Make sure we don't have any mouse nest in here. Filter kind of looks oil soaked. And no nest, which is surprising because that little plastic tube I just showed you is missing, so prime spot for them to crawl into. All right, boost line, here we go. So, <clears throat> looks like we had, looks like we had that line going through the firewall here. Um, coming over to this little doodad. Do I know what it does? Nope. All right, so actually, found that. I had it from O'Reilly's. I bought this for the Camaro a while ago because well, as you about imagine the line broke and leaked oil everywhere. That has happened to me more times than I can count. Twice. So apparently I can only count twice. Go ahead and pop this off. Alright, so this is definitely our issue. Somebody just drilled some holes through the firewall. No rubber grommets, and you have a plastic line going through there. Yeah, I bet this car probably got a good 20,000 miles and just rubbed a hole through that, and they said, ah, the heck with it. <laughs> so we're gonna just go ahead and do that all over again so we can just drive it one mile. <laughs> all right, I'll do the proper thing. I'll route it under this so it can rub against that metal too. Let's see if we got any mice hiding up here, or if I can play hide and seek with this vacuum line. Okay, 
Okay. Oh, right here's the old one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right here, hiding in the glove box. Any treasures in here? Does this gauge come out of here? <laughs> Oh my, this thing is just falling apart. <laughs> That's the old one. You better turn that so it's upright. We do things proper around here. Alright. And, uh,. Hold that back there. Ah, oh, yeah. All right, let's see what that thing does. All right, let's give her some throttle. Who wants this car for free? We got the boost gauge hooked up and it runs just terrible still. <laughs> Back to the engine bay, but hey, at least we got a working boost gauge, so now when we finally do get it running right, we can see what she's making. This is our injector harness that goes to our injectors there. And right behind it here, we have the fuel rail with a nice little fitting on it. Um, so what we're gonna do is hook up a hose to that to a gauge and check the fuel pressure. I did not have this kit two days ago and I did not buy it for this car. I actually bought it for the Camaro because <laughs> we've been having the fuel pump issues with that thing. All right, so I clipped the key forward. We're at 50 PSI. We're at 50 PSI right now and the gauge is not moving. So just kind of double check that, watch, make sure we're maintaining pressure, it shouldn't drop. Now the test is to actually start the car and see if the fuel pump is maintaining that pressure as it demands it. So let's go ahead and fire this up. <laughs> So good and bad news with that. As you saw, we're maintaining 50 PSI on our fuel rail, um, which is good. I think that's that's okay. That should be enough to make it run. You know, it's just little stuff everywhere that could be causing this issue. So let's just. Oh, I need to put PV blast. Let's. I'm gonna do that right now for it. Because I got brake fluid in the master cylinder. Oh, this is broken. Spray some PB Blaster on these lines again. Soak those really good. The bolts. All right, so I've been sitting here scratching my head on this thing, um, cause it's still running really rough. We got fuel pressure, we got fuel, put fresh fuel in the tank, still running really rough. Um, and you know, what's a car need to run good? Compression, spark, and fuel. I'm pretty sure there's compression, and I know there's fuel, because we tested that, so we're having spark issues. Now here's where the cool thing is. <laughs> we're in the car here. Now, they actually integrated a process to turn the key on and off, and what that's gonna do is flash your service engine light, or your power loss light, in other words, a number of times. Now you want to count how many times that it flashes at you and wait for the pause then count it again and that would represent basically two numbers or a single digit number. 
so that can potentially tell you where to look to find issues in the car. So let's go ahead and do it. You wanna cycle the key on, off, on, off, on. And you don't wanna start the car, but it's gonna flash the light at us. Now leave it on. The light's gonna disappear. Now it's gonna flash at us. One, one, two. So there we have 12. Pausing. One, two, three, four, five. Pause. One, two, three, four. Pause. So we got 54. One, two, three, four, five. Pause. One, two, three, four, five. All right, we got nothing coming back on. That gave us are three numbers, 12, 54, and 55. Now I already went ahead and searched the old Google interweb and looked up these codes to kinda try and figure out what could be causing this issue. Now 55, I'll start with the last one, that's basically just end of code, so that code doesn't mean anything. So we got 12 and 54. 12 is just basically telling us that the battery was disconnected at some point. Now you can reset these codes, for now, we'll just leave the codes there. 54 means that it has no sync pickup signal. In other words, ignition timing is just going out the window. <laughs> no, but um, that could mean a couple of things. One quick thing to verify is check your spark plugs. As I mentioned, the plugs look new, the spark plug wires look new. Um, we can go ahead and pull a plug to see if they look lean or rich, uh, maybe they're soaked with fuel. We'll double check that. Also double check the spark plug firing order, make sure those are on the right direction on the distributor cap. Now once you pull the cap off you're going to have your HEP sensor underneath of that. What is that? Sometimes it has two sensors, sometimes it has one, depending on if you're turboed or non-turboed. Um, and HEP stands for Hall Effect Pickup. And what that basically does is control the timing of the car um, electronically. When they start to go bad, you may notice rough idle, cars running like garbage, hence us right now. <laughs> and uh, well, unfortunately, it's 11 o'clock at night and all the parts stores are closed. All right, we're back to the charger. We finally got parts in for this thing. We needed the distributor. Uh, ignition pickup and apparently it's like some one-off year thing because this one has a two wire which is nobody had it in hand I've ordered one from Summit Racing turns out it was wrong um, and then one of the guys that works for me his dad works at the Ford dealership and just so happens they had one sitting there which must be the only one in the country because the only one that I could find it was like two month wait time on it um, so I thought this car was dead in the water, but anywho, we finally got the parts in. We're going to go ahead now, pop the distributor cap off, drop this new one in. Hopefully that fixes our misfire, um, so that way we can get this thing running good and then pull it back into the shop and fix whatever's going on with the brakes. I started pulling the master cylinder because I believe the piston in there is rusted. Um, because when I unbolted it, the pedal works fine now, but as soon as you bolt it back up, the pedal is rock solid, nothing's moving. I tried pressing it in with the screwdriver, so I think the master cylinder is shot on it, but I tried breaking the lines free, it kept wanting to strip, so I just, I've been soaking it in PB Blaster every day, and I lost my torch, I don't know, it grew legs and walked off somewhere, but got a new torch so we can heat those lines up, hopefully break the fittings loose on the master cylinder, and get some brakes to this thing. Take it out for a drive finally and see how it runs. We went ahead, put the new part in. It's just two bolts, cap comes off, literally just slides in there, two plug-ins. Super easy, took three minutes. Went ahead and threw our anti-theft device back in, or otherwise known as the battery. Let's uh, see if she runs any better. Moment of truth. Oh, I suppose you need keys. Another anti-theft device.
still idling really rough down low for some reason. I apologize for the wind. It's a typical day in Iowa where the wind's blowing 100 miles an hour. Gas tanks on this side. And so I'm hoping this car's just been sitting a long time and the fuel gauge is almost on E. And hopefully with some fresh gas, we can get the octane back up in it. And hopefully it starts running better. Otherwise, I think we might have an O2 sensor issue. I can fill my car with no hands. <laughs> Mind the cardboard, I was an idiot and left the window down. <laughs> and of course it rained. Let's see if we got some all right, fuel gauge works. All right, still going up. Six gallons gave us half a tank. I think it was just out of gas the whole time. Literally sounds like my grandma's golf cart. <laughs> Runs about as good as my leaf blower. the vacuum gauge is working perfect it's holding about 15 inches which is pretty much stock on it and it's working perfect every time you get in boost so we know we don't have any vacuum leaks i went ahead and i sprayed around the intake and all the vacuum lines with some starting fluid just to see if it would rev up or anything like that so i think the fresh gas is I thought maybe we we're out of gas threw some fresh gas in that car fired up and ran awesome for five minutes and then I shut it off and I went on with my day. I'm like, hey, great, it's fixed. Let's go get the plates for it so we can go take it out on the road and stuff. Yeah, no, now it's not running again. And uh, I thought that it was super weird that I lost my RPM signal at some point with putting the new distributor in. So I kind of drove it to the garage in a sense, like it was bad. But we've got it pulled in here. I started looking at the distributor cap again. It didn't look like it was sitting on there correctly. So I took it back off. I started looking at it again. I'm like, oh, I've seen this before. I was working on a Jeep the other week. And I noticed they have a little notch. And the cap is supposed to slide down on that notch. Well, stock versus aftermarket, it like switches the notch on you. So the cap moves in the sense that... It's 180 off from what it looked like originally. Same case. The notch was flipped around. I, I just, what I did was I pulled the cap off and set it aside. I replaced the pickup on it. I put the cap back on so I didn't have to, you know, Google the firing order and whatnot, even though it's only four wires, not a big deal. Put the cap on. Well, like I said, it was running good. Well, it turns out it's not running good. So I popped the cap off. Took the wires off, flipped the cap so it actually sits on the notch correctly, and plugged the wires back in, and well, it fired up, but it's still running identical. Um, but now we have RPM signal again, so it's running good again. <laughs> you just gotta start it up, shut it off like 18 times in a row, and it, then it runs good. Then the time will only tell. I actually think. I may have had a spark plug wrong. There is so many variations of this 2.2. I say that, but there's probably only one. But there's, okay, Google says there's like 3,000 variations of this four cylinder and these plug wires. So I tried like at least five different ones. And now finally you fire the car up and it runs decent. Now I say that. I say that, but now I'll probably run bad. Let's see. Can't see the gauges, but I'll fire her up. He's running. I, uh... Oh, that scared me for a second. I 
thought that was a fire. I about to drop the camera and grab the fire extinguisher. I do have some new plug wires. These look new, but they are corroded and they look burnt on the end. So we're going to replace those. I got four new spark plugs over here for it. Um, I also got a Note 2 sensor that looks completely wrong, so I'm going to return that and get my $30 back. Let's throw the plugs in, throw the wires on, let's see if it, see what it does. Alright, so we got our spark plugs laid out here. We got great, not great, and soot. Alright, let's, uh, we'll get that one out of there. <laughs> so, clearly, I got it labeled out here. We got number one, which super clean, not uh, firing at all. Which, having the firing order mixed up, I was expecting to maybe see like two of them that were clean and two that were actually firing correctly, but that's not the case. It was only that one that was not firing correctly. Um, these three are just super sooty, um, and you can kind of see on the spark plug wires, they're burnt. Not not bad, they're clearly replaced at some point, but um, I already had the new set, so throw them on. I'm actually gonna use that set on the Daytona uh, just to see if we can get it running. And I don't know, maybe this doesn't do anything. Maybe there could be another issue. And then I went ahead and I kind of marked down the firing order too. So starting from passenger side, we'd have one, two, three, four and on our cylinders on the motor. Our distributor sitting in front, number one, as you're kind of looking at it, down would be on your top left, three, four, two. And that little notch on the aftermarket cap was on the back side for this one. And it was opposite with the old pickup. So there you have it. Quick little uh, update on the ignition. Let's go see if that thing fires up and runs any better or it sends a piston right into the spark plug. I hope that's not the case. There's a little hose that connects the air box to like your pickup area down there, your cold air intake. And it actually brought the idle down to where it should be. It's sitting here idling great. I think uh, we're gonna go ahead and call that at night. It's running decent again. I'm gonna air up the tires real quick. And we'll see you in the morning for a cruise. All right, it's like day 82, working on the charger. We finally got the Master cylinder here, we got the lines broke. We're gonna sort of bench bleed that to the best of my ability. I don't have the little hoses or any fittings laying around and I don't have time to go to the parts store. So throw some fluid in it, try and get it to bleed a little bit, slap it on the car. Already noticed that the passenger front brake line has been pinched off. So we got three out of the four brakes, that's good enough. Let's go ahead and get that installed. Maybe we do have brakes, I don't know.
out the brakes are working so good that they're not working. They're kind of seized up. I can't hardly get the car to roll in first gear or reverse. Um, so clearly either calipers are rusted up, the pistons, or the proportioning valve possibly is bad. But we're going to tackle that next week on part two for it. Fix the tail light, throw a radio in it, um, maybe vacuum it. I don't know. But we'll see you next week. Thank you guys.